subscribe. Welcome everyone. This is a very special day for you, our students, your family, and for Ashford University as a whole. There are more than 9,000 students and graduates being represented this weekend. More, one, more than 1,000 over this year today made the trip to share this celebration. What a great delight to have you with us today. This weekend we have graduates from 49 states, as well as from Guam, the Virgin Islands, and military bases around the world. I hear President, it's a great honor to see you all come together as one class to celebrate this momentous achievement. Let me ask you a question. You're going to have to shout out because we're dark here. How many of the graduates are parents? Fantastic. This is one of the greatest gifts that you can give to your child today. A strong message is sent to a child with his or her parents walk across the stage to accept them as their diploma. I congratulate you. I thank you for making a difference, not only in your life, but in the lives of your children today. You serve as an extraordinary role model for them. I now have the pleasure of introducing our commencement speaker for today. He's known worldwide, of course, as an advocate for reading and literacy. But you may know that he's also known worldwide as an actor, producer, author, director, passionate about merging the world of technology and education to expand learning opportunities for people of all nations. We are honored to have him speak at our ceremonies, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. LeVar Burton. Irma Jean's way. 
growing up because that's the way it was. My mother was a full-time social worker throughout the course of my elementary and then high school education. She worked all day and made sure that we had, we, my two sisters and myself, had the best education possible. I feel it really appropriate that the roots of this educational institution are indeed spiritual. I was educated, I shared with Sister William, for the most part by Catholic nun for the whole of my life. I spent four years in a Catholic seminary studying for the priesthood, and that's another story. <laughs> But education has been the hallmark of the people in my family. If you are a burger, you are an educator. My mother, my youngest sister, my older sister, my son, two nieces, a nephew, and three cousins, all in the field of education. And so what I don't need to share with you, but I will just the same, none of us, none of us, gets here by ourselves. We stand the beneficiaries of countless numbers of souls who have made unbelievable sacrifices so that we can be where we are. I went to the White House recently, and it was remarkable for me. Not because I was at the White House, I have been to the White House before, and I've met presidents before, but I went to the White House a few weeks ago for the White House Science Fair. Every year over the past three years, President Obama has brought national scholars at the elementary and high school level in STEM education science, technology, engineering, and math, and he's brought them to the White House and put on a science fair and celebrated them. Much of the same way he does NCAA champions or Super Bowl champs, they come to the White House. And the president believes that these kids and our future are inextricably linked, that there is no way to pull them apart. And so after the morning's activities at the Science Fair, the White House staff gathered everybody in the East Room of the White House. And probably, I know you've seen this room numbers of times on television. Gold frames and the President's podium there in the middle of the room. And I walked into the East Room of the White House and there was down in the front row a chair with my name, a little place though. And I took a picture of it, you know, I'm on Twitter. <laughs> you gotta, you gotta capture your content, you know. You gotta share it. So I took a picture from my Twitter feed later. And the president came and he, he made a speech and he introduced some of the kids and introduced a new initiative to really connect these kids and kids like them with the business community to really begin to groove that pathway toward them being the next inventors, scientists, engineers. See, I believe in the power of that which we believe about ourselves. I believe in the power of the imagination. I literally believe that there was some young kid who saw those original episodes of Star Trek, right? That child grew up became a scientist, an engineer, a designer of a product that is responsible today for a piece of technology more prevalent than the toaster. You see, that child grew up seeing those indelible images of Captain Kirk reaching to that belt for the place on his hip because apparently there are no pockets in the future. <laughs> he pulled out from behind his hip that device, he flipped it over and then he called the ship and said, Scotty! Right? That child grew up 
seeing those images, living with those images, believing in the possibility of those images, and has designed a piece of technology more prevalent on the planet than the toaster. By a show of hands, how many people have ever used or been near someone using a flip cell phone? <laughs> That which we imagine is what we tend to manifest. And so the president really gets it. We wanted to encourage these kids to keep dreaming, to keep imagining, to keep creating. And so after his remarks, he came down and he was shaking hands with the people in the first row. And I'm incredibly excited. I had not met Barack Obama. And as the president approached me and he's shaking the hand of the person next to me, and he looks up and my eyes meet him and he breaks out to red and I realize the president knows who Kota is! <laughs> <laughs> and so it was breaking protocol because you weren't supposed to have cameras in this room. <laughs> But I had to take my shot and I asked the president, can I get that twist in? <laughs> and he smiled and said, I'm going to let you do that. And instead of shaking the hand of the person to my right, he went to the person behind me so I could do that. <laughs> <laughs> but it wasn't until I got back to my hotel room and was reliving the day through the pictures that I had taken, right? got to that picture of the place called with my name. And in my mind, I superimposed under my name, LeVar Burton, the name Kut, K-U-N. And suddenly the emotion was overwhelming. You see, it wasn't just Bar meeting President Barack Obama. It was Kuta meeting the Black President Barack Obama. Oh, right. And I recognized in that moment that I was standing in for my mom, for my mom who came home from Korea and went to college on the GI Bill, for my sisters, for all of my cousins, aunts and uncles. I was standing in for hundreds of thousands of soldiers who sacrificed, who bled, who died broken and disenfranchised so that I might stand there for them. We, each one of us, are standings for those who have gone before us, those who have made the way, those who have made the way ready, those who have made sacrifices, your families. I'm astonished at the number of parents in the graduating class today. Y'all work hard, 24-7, 365, to get it done. I'm amazed at how many members of the military are enrolled in this college. It's what I recognize as a graduating class, of 2013 at Nashville University is that y'all are some get it done kind of folks. And me, I'm always looking for the right tool for the job. I think the right tool for the job always makes the job go better. So my question to you is, what kind of tool will you be now that you have worked it out, got that piece of paper? Well, they're up here on stage. You'll be up here in a minute. What kind of tool will you be?
See y'all, I'm looking to change the world. One children's book at a time. And I know that you all have your hearts set on leaving this world a better place than the one you've inherited. Yeah. So be mindful of the kind of tool you'll be. Be mindful then of what it is you focus on. Be mindful of the kinds of dreams you have. Because you see, dreams really do come true. I have no doubt about it. Dreams are the stuff of reality. They really are. Yeah. <laughs> and like that kid who grew up watching Star Trek, as we move forward in our lives and focus on those things we would like to see happen in this world, no, please no. That there is no thing you cannot accomplish if you put your mind to it and are willing to work hard enough at it. This experience in Ashford, I'm sure, has shown you that never forget the gift you have given, not just to yourselves, but to your families and to future generations. I am humbled to be in your presence. Y'all have overcome obstacles, big and small. You've traveled distances far and wide to be here today, and so I celebrate you. God bless you all. Get out of there and kick some